Hello grade 10s, in this video we will be looking at this mechanics question, it involves motion in one direction, let's do this. So the question is asking me a variety of things, ranging from definitions, conversions, calculations and finally sketching a graph. Our first question is to define velocity. I'll read this little story now, but let's just define velocity. Remember the formula for velocity looks like this. That divided by that. Now that is the change in position. Remember X is position divided by the change in time. So how we say that in words is velocity is the rate of change in position. Every time you see rate, know that rate means dividing by time. So we're dividing by time, it's the change in position per unit time. My next question wants me to convert 20 meters per second to kilometers per hour. But let's read the question. We've got two vehicles, P and Q, and they're approaching a traffic light intersection at 20 meters per second. So there's where the 20 meters per second comes in. This is a speed or a velocity. In this case, it's a speed. They're not giving me a direction, but it's 20 meters per second. And they tell you, more details after that but let's just convert meters per second to kilometers per hour so remember i showed you that to go from meters per second to kilometers per hour what we need to do is multiply by 3.6 if we're going the other way from kilometers per hour to meters per second we divide by 3.6 and we get 72 kilometers per hour my next question requires me to calculate the acceleration of vehicle P. Now let's read the story. Two vehicles are approaching a traffic light intersection at 20 meters per second. The light turns orange when they're 30 meters from the intersection. So a scenario that basically looks something like this. And it says that they approach the traffic light intersection at 20 meters per second. As I mentioned, that is the speed or the velocity of the cars, okay? The light turns orange, 30 meters. Vehicle P, so this vehicle over here, puts on its brakes. So when a traffic light goes orange, you know, oh goodness, I need to slow down. Vehicle P is actually hitting the brakes, slowing down to stop at the intersection so by the time the car reaches this point over here the final velocity will end up being zero for car p okay but vehicle q decides oh no i'm going to go through this light quickly and accelerates at four meters per second squared so vehicle q is speeding up and vehicle q although it has an initial velocity of 20 meters per second what it's going to do when the light goes orange is it's going to accelerate at four meters per second squared it's going to speed up in the positive direction so it's got a positive acceleration and it is doing this over a period of three seconds before continuing at a constant velocity they want the acceleration of vehicle p so basically remember p is the vehicle that is slowing down so we need to list the variables that we have we know that p's initial velocity is going to be 20 meters per second it says it over there approaches the traffic lights at 20 meters per second p is going to slow down and stop which means it says there slow down to stop so p's final velocity is going to be zero and how far is p going to travel before it stops at the traffic light 30 meters away from its original position so my change in position my displacement the distance that it travels is 30 meters because I'm taking to the right towards the traffic light as positive, my initial velocity is positive, my displacement is positive. We want acceleration. So remember, when we pick an equation of motion, we need to know three out of the four variables. We're looking for the fourth variable. And then we choose an equation based on what we have and what we need. So if we consider what we have and what we need, we have initial and final velocity, we have displacement, and we want acceleration. So it makes most sense to use this equation of motion. This is what I'm looking for, and I have all the other variables in this equation. It doesn't make sense to use any of the others because they require time as well, and I don't have time. So what you'll do is you'll write down your formula first, this one over here. Then you'll substitute your variables into your formula. Your final velocity is zero. Your initial velocity is 20. Don't forget to square it. Acceleration is what you're looking for. And your displacement is X. Now, when you solve for this, remember zero squared is going to be zero. 20 squared is 400. And when you simplify this, 
2a times 30. Basically, what we're doing is we multiply the 2 and the 30. We get 60a. You're going to take the 400 over. It's going to be negative 400, and this is 60a. Negative 400 divided by 60. So it's a negative divided by a positive. Your answer is going to be negative 6 comma six 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 and the sixes go on and on and on and on this is now a final answer acceleration so you may round off but what's also very important to remember is we never leave our final answer as a negative if we're dealing with a vector the negative just tells me that the car is accelerating in the negative direction the car is basically slowing down acceleration is acting in the negative direction or away from the traffic light so my final answer, positive, you rewrite it as a positive, 6,67. Your unit is meters per second squared. Please write the correct unit. It's got a power of negative 2, not negative 1. Remember, negative 1 is for velocity or speed. And then your direction, you have to give a direction, is in the opposite direction or in the negative direction. The reason why is because the negative tells me it's not in the original direction towards the traffic light. Acceleration is in the opposite direction, away from the traffic light. And the, the reason you know you have to give a direction is because they asked for acceleration. And acceleration is a vector, which means it needs a magnitude, so an amount, and a direction. If you don't give the direction, your answer is technically wrong. So you get marks for your blank formula, always blank formula first, substitution, answer with unit and direction. My next question wants me to calculate the final velocity of vehicle Q. So let's remind ourselves of the information we have about vehicle Q. We have the initial speed or velocity. We have the fact that Q is accelerating at 4 meters per second squared, which means Q is speeding up. So Q is speeding up going in the positive direction. So it's a positive acceleration. Remember, it's not a negative acceleration. For this one, for vehicle P, P was slowing down in the positive direction. So going towards the traffic light, the positive direction, but slowing down means negative acceleration. Here, speeding up, so going faster in the positive direction, positive acceleration. And the other bit of information that we have for vehicle Q is three seconds. So my time is three seconds. And they want to know the final velocity of my vehicle Q. So what they mean by final velocity is they mean the speed or the velocity that it reached after accelerating. Remember they said it's going to accelerate or speed up. And it's going to do this for three seconds and then it's going to continue at a constant velocity. Now, I know a lot of students will want to make the mistake of using delta x equals 30 here as well. And it's because initially, remember, we said that car P and car Q were both 30 meters from the traffic light. But we don't know after how long or after how far Q will travel when it reaches its velocity, final velocity after accelerating after it accelerated it might not take 30 meters to accelerate for three seconds so we can't assume that the time is three seconds it's going to take three seconds to accelerate and it's going to travel 30 meters in that time it could accelerate so remember the, the car's trying to get past this robot this traffic light so at this point it starts to accelerate so a equals four meters per second squared and it accelerates for three seconds that acceleration could possibly only take place over maybe 10, 15 meters. And then it continues at a constant velocity for the rest of the time. So I can't use 30 meters. 30 meters isn't the distance over which it's going to accelerate. It's just the distance between where it starts and where the traffic light is. I hope that makes sense. So we can't use this for vehicle Q. So we need to select a different formula based on the information that I have and what I need. I have time now. So it's going to change the formula that I select. I have VI, I have A and I have T and I want VF. So I think it makes sense to use this first formula. We have these three and we want this one. So we write down the formulas, the formula as is on the formula sheet. VF is what we're looking for. VI is 20. Acceleration is 4 and my time is 3. My final velocity is therefore 32 meters per second, and you have to say in the positive direction, or you can say towards the traffic lights. 
but you have to give a direction because they want velocity, not speed. If they ask for final speed, my calculation would stay the exact same, but I wouldn't have to give a direction. Our next question now wants a velocity time graph for both vehicles on the same set of axes. So I'm going to have two lines two lines on my velocity versus time graph, label the relevant velocity and time values. So when they ask for something like this in your test, when they say label the velocity and time values, they mean those values which were given or which were calculated. So firstly, let's label our axes. Velocity is going to be on my y-axis. Time is going to be on my x-axis. And before I even plot on this graph over here, let's just remind ourselves of the different values we have for each vehicle, P and Q. Remember, both vehicles start off with the same initial velocity. Remember, P eventually comes to a stop, which means the final velocity for P will be zero. And what we don't know about this question over here, they didn't ask me to calculate it. We don't know how long it took for the vehicle to go from 20 to zero meters per second. If we wanted to, we could calculate it quickly. We know that P starts out to 20 meters per second, comes to zero, a stop, and it does this in 30 meters because it stops at the intersection, which is 30 meters away. If you use this formula, plug in the values that I know about P and I solve for T, you will find that the time it takes for P to slow down from 20 meters per second to zero meters per second is also three seconds. So now I know time. However, if you look at the memo of this paper, they actually tell you that this time of three seconds was not required because it wasn't a calculation that we did. However, to make my graph as accurate as possible, I would calculate how long this took because they do say label the relevant velocity and time values. So I know P is initial and final velocity, but I don't know the time that it took to reach that zero velocity. So I would calculate time. Then for Q, we know that the initial velocity of Q is 20. The final velocity of Q was calculated in this section over here in this question, 3.4. It ends up being 32 meters per second, 32. And we know that it took three seconds to get to this final velocity. They told me that in the question, Q accelerates through the intersection for three seconds. Now it is just a coincidence that these times end up being the same. It doesn't mean that because Q took three seconds, P would automatically take three seconds. It just so happened to be like that. And then it remember it said, so Q was um, accelerating through the intersection and then it stayed at this constant velocity after that. So how would these lines look? Well, they both start at 20. So if this is zero over here, let's say that 20 is maybe somewhere over here. You don't have to be exact with these graphs in terms of your labels. Both straight lines are going to start at 20. Okay, definitely both starting at 20 because that is 20 and that is 20. Let's do the line for P first. So the final velocity is at zero and it takes three seconds. So that straight line will have to go down to the axis. It'll cut where time is three seconds. You can, of course, go one second, two seconds, three four and so on it's not necessary but essentially initial velocity for p final velocity for p the final velocity is zero as you can see it goes down to the x-axis and we connect them so that is for p and i'm going to label it and i'm done so we're done with p now let's do q again q's initial velocity was 20 which i've done over there the final velocity was 32 now 32 is obviously higher up on my velocity axis. So maybe somewhere up here, 32. So how, we are, how are we going to do this? It also took three seconds to reach that final velocity of 32. So basically where you see three seconds and you see 32, that's where my final velocity is going to end up being. And we connect those two. So essentially what this curve is telling me for Q is that Q started off with a 20 meters per second velocity. And then over a period of three seconds, you can see here on the x-axis is three seconds, the velocity increased, increased, increased. Then at three seconds, it reached a velocity of 32 meters per second. Then what did the question say happened after it reached its final velocity, after accelerated? It said there that it continued at a constant velocity. So technically to correctly finish off your graph, you need to make this curve continue at a constant velocity.
just like this. There we go. So this is curve Q and curve P done. So this is how we would mark you according to a graph that looks like this. Remember that for P, technically, we don't have to know that it goes down to three seconds, but we definitely know that for Q. So it has to be there for Q anyway. I hope you found this video useful. Remember to check out the playlist link below for more videos like this. I'll see you in another one very soon. Bye, everyone.